This is Witchbase News for Friday the 25th of November 2022 I'm Commander Burr. In a packed Elite Dangerous news show this week FDEV confirm updates 15 and 16 are in our future, Odyssey players gain access to Horizons 4.0, the account copy system is temporarily shutting down as Frontier splits the game into legacy and live versions and the Thargoid peace mission aboard the Kingfisher megaship meets a Stargoid and its fate. As always if you enjoy our stuff hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and ping that little bell to see all our Elite Dangerous content. You can also join our Patreon which directly supports the work we do here at the pit. Links to that and everything else are below. Before we get started this week on what is a fairly monster show just a quick note to let you know that Frontiers Black Friday event continues through the weekend until December the 5th in fact. The oh so rare and oh so desired midnight black paint jobs are on sale today Black Friday and the equally desired and rare Stygian paint jobs will be on sale on Monday. There's significant savings to be had right across the store if you wish to line up your arcs accordingly. The Thargoid advocacy project that had over the last few weeks been promoting the idea of peaceful coexistence with the murderous multi limbed horrors from beyond the stars launched the Kingfisher megaship this week to its historic meeting with Stargoid 1 now named Taranis by the peace loving spider huggers in the Hyades sector YOQB5-1 system. Taranis which has been travelling at superluminal speeds in an almost direct line toward the bubble since the end of August is now less than 200 light years from Sol. It passed through the permit locked Hyades sector system yesterday where the Kingfisher megaship and its party of some 3000 plus peace advocates was waiting for it. This isn't of course all the peace advocates obviously. Their frontman the politician Dalton Chase announced just prior to the megaships departure that he was unfortunately not travelling with the megaship for its once in a lifetime never to be repeated historic opportunity at interspecies galactic peace as he had a previously unannounced scheduling conflict that meant he had to bravely stay behind 5 miles underground in a hardened bunker shampooing his goldfish. To almost no one surprise except perhaps the onboard peace enthusiasts the very moment the spiralling alien insectoid death machine entered the system contact was lost with the megaship with their last minute garbled transmission seemingly containing a distress signal. The system permit lock was rapidly lifted and the pilots federation quickly called upon the galactic community to investigate the megaships fate. It is worth a mention at this point that it does appear as though the Galnet news story and the subsequent lifting of the permit lock may have happened slightly prematurely as the news piece states the megaship hasn't been in contact after just over a day since its arrival but the megaship only moved for its meeting on the Thursday server tick just before the news piece was published. A scenario that I'm sure must have caused much scrabbling and gnashing of teeth at FDEV HQ. Whatever the case initially on Thursday after the story broke investigating the megaships location revealed the telltale green goopy gas clouds and recently very remodeled bits of megaship floating in space lifeless. There are logs to be downloaded, they are fully voiced and detail the build up to the meeting and the megaships last moments. Huge thanks to Commander Alexa who was present at the wrecked megaship at the very moment in fact that the Stargoid Taranis went soaring past. You can see the footage Alexa captured on screen now. At the time that we investigated on Thursday morning you were safe anywhere in the system. As the day progressed however and the Stargoid continued to move through the system it began to fill with Thargoid interceptors. Now in normal space anywhere in the system immediately aggressive Thargoid vessels will drop into the instance with you. If you're going to collect the Kingfisher logs we'd highly recommend running with a very cold ship to avoid detection as long as possible. 
As I've mentioned I don't think anyone is really in the least bit surprised that the Kingfisher effort met with an untimely end. From the Thargoid perspective as a species we recently tried to wipe them all out. This is the second attempt we've had at Xenocide with them as the primary focal point. It's no great shocker that even if they were capable they're no longer up for a cozy fireside chat. At the very least the question of the Stargoids intentions has been roundly and definitively answered. They have no peaceful intentions whatsoever. They are not open to negotiation or communication even. At the very least right now. They are, it seems, engines of war and they are now at our very doorstep with dark intent. What happens next we will know soon enough. Back in August Frontier announced that all future new content for Elite Dangerous would only be available in what they refer to as the 4.0 codebase. For the uninitiated there are two supported codebases for Elite Dangerous 3.8 and 4.0. The 4.0 codebase essentially refers to the Odyssey era of the game and 3.8 is everything that came before Odyssey. With the cessation of future content development on the consoles those platforms became fixed in the 3.8 era whilst any new content moved forward onto the PC platform only via the 4.0 codebase. With me so far? With the launch of the 4.0 codebase supporting Odyssey Frontier have created Horizons 4.0 on the PC as a platform for players on the PC who haven't yet purchased Odyssey to jump in and try Horizons using the 4.0 technology whilst experiencing the narrative and some gameplay elements that FDev are introducing going forward. Importantly if you had purchased Odyssey then Horizons 4.0 wasn't available to you and you'd be unable to instance and play alongside any Horizons 4.0 commanders without both of you dropping back to Horizons 3.8 as Odyssey doesn't instance with Horizons and that would mean none of the new content to experience. Significantly less than ideal. This week Frontier have announced what amounts to somewhat of a simplification of all of the above but also a significant change for those players still playing on 3.8 on the consoles. The game is being divided into two modes called Live and Legacy when update 14 launches next week on the 29th of November. Live is essentially the 4.0 codebase as described above and encompasses Horizons 4.0 and Odyssey. Legacy encompasses the Horizons 3.8 codebase still usable across PCs and consoles. Frontier did specify back in August that no new content would be making its way into the 3.8 codebase and that statement is now coming to the fore. Following update 14 Legacy Elite Dangerous will no longer feature community goals or for that matter the Galnet newsfeed. Further, whilst the background simulation will still reflect player actions those effects and actions will not be reflected in the live version of the game. The two versions of Elite Dangerous Legacy console and PC and live Horizons and Odyssey are now truly separating. What we're assuming from this is that going forward from update 14 the live version of the game will now very much feature content, stories and scenarios that just aren't going to be visible or indeed possible in the legacy game. With the launch of update 14 Frontier are addressing the disquiet that surrounded the PC launch of what is now Horizons Live by opening up access to those that have already made the move to Odyssey meaning Odyssey players will now be able to switch into Horizons mode and play alongside other Horizons Live players and experience the new content and story expected with update 14 onwards. Similarly PC players will also have access to Horizons Legacy but again as I've mentioned this version of the game will have no new content, no galnet and the background simulation and indeed the commander save on that platform will be completely separate from the live game. Any cosmetics etc that commanders already own will be visible in the legacy game but in future there's a chance that some new cosmetics will only be visible in the live game and where that's the case it will be stated clearly on the store. 
Importantly for any console commanders who have not yet taken advantage of Frontiers free commander copy offer to clone their commander onto the PC side of the game and get a free copy of Horizons on PC to boot Frontier have said that introducing the legacy and live versions will mean that certain data from legacy can no longer be copied into the live game. As a result the console copy option is being temporarily suspended after the 29th. It will return during the first quarter of next year however not in its current extremely comprehensive form and will only copy the most essential profile data related to commander progression. In Frontiers words they are quote strongly encouraging unquote anyone who hasn't taken advantage of the service to do so before update 14 on Tuesday. It's worth reiterating here if you are a console player who is sitting on the fence the copy is completely consequence free to your console commander account. It is a copy not a move. With the copy you also get a free copy of Elite Dangerous Horizons for the PC. Your console account will continue to work just as it has prior to the copy. It's also worth underlining that we produced a video this very week which is linked on screen right now that talks about how you don't necessarily need a PC at all in fact to play Elite Dangerous Odyssey. If you are currently a console commander or an existing PC commander who perhaps can't run Odyssey and you wish to continue your adventure into the next generation but always assumed you couldn't take a look at that video as it's entirely possible the solution we discussed there could work as well for you as it has for countless others. One of the biggest reveals of the announcement however was an almost casual mention of the existence of future updates past Tuesday. We knew already that update 15 was on the cards after some comments made by Arthur Tolmy on a recent Frontier livestream. Now this weeks announcement whilst obviously not giving any details makes mention of updates 15 and 16 and states that both updates are planned to contain both new content and gameplay mechanics linked to the unfolding events in the galaxy and that more about these two updates will be revealed to the player base next year. Whilst it might seem a triviality Frontier acknowledging that not only a further update is to be expected for the live game but then another update beyond that represents a huge paradigm shift in the way the company has historically chosen to communicate to their player base. I have roundly criticised them for their more historic communication faux pas in the past and it's now only right that likewise I acknowledge when they get it right. The simple act of confirming that there are further updates in the games future right on top of the launch of what FDev are saying is one of Odyssey's bigger updates should give most players in the galaxy a confidence boost that their favourite space game has a future and indeed that that future is evolving and growing. Update 14 to Elite Dangerous launches on Tuesday the 29th of November after what is expected to be a fairly significant downtime for the galaxy. Frontier are hoping to release full information on the release schedule this Monday ahead of the deployment of the patch on Tuesday. We will of course keep you posted on everything here as well. Where do you think the peace process goes now following the loss of the Kingfisher? Are you a recently transferred console commander now playing Odyssey? What are you expecting to see when update 14 launches? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 commanders follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.